Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Providence Money Wisdom Podcast. I'm your host, Isaac, Client Advisor at Providence. Today's episode is the 8th chapter of our mini-series titled The Story of Our Client's Wealth Journey. In our first episode, we talked about who our clients typically are, their concerns and their need for a trusted wealth advisor. In our second episode, we talked about the potential reasons for the lack of trust in the advisory industry and the need for sound wealth advice. In our third episode, we discussed how Provident was set up to be the trusted advisor to our clients to allow us to guide them through a minefield of misinformation with honest, independent and competent advice. In our fourth episode, we talked about our discovery process and why it is important for us to understand our prospective clients on a deeper level and to guide them to make life decisions before financial decisions. In our fifth episode, we talked about the presentation of analysis meeting where we consolidate and crunch the numbers and present various scenarios to our clients. In our sixth episode, we talked about the presentation of plan meeting, which is the start of the implementation phase of our advisory process and the first meeting that we make an investment recommendation. And in our previous episode, we talked about advanced planning, which involves guiding our clients to make thoughtful decisions about their future, ensuring that their wishes are respected and their loved ones are taken care of. Today, we will be talking about what happens after the planning work is done. Joining me today is Evelyn Goh, Deputy CEO and Chief Advisory Officer here at Provident. Hi Evelyn, great to have you back. Hi Isaac. Right, so let's just jump right into it. So now that we have done the full financial plan uh, and potentially the advanced plan as well, hmm. um, is this the full extent of our role as a wealth advisor? Um, it is not the full extent yet. Okay, so I mean at this point, um, like you have kind of like shared, right, the entire wealth plan will have been implemented. Um, but just like the wedding preparations, the wedding preparation, the celebration is uh, over, but now it's the start of a marriage. So mm. it's the, I would say the role of the uh, advisor, the journey starts now, you know, it's like a, the start of a lifelong uh conversation, a lifelong journey uh, of partnering the client together. So just like in all relationship, communications is very, very important. Mm. So that's where at Provident, uh, we emphasize a lot of uh, regular contact with our clients. So that's where um, on a company level, every month the client will receive from us our monthly market updates. And then on a quarterly basis, uh, they'll receive our newsletter. So that's where you know they will uh, read of uh, thought leadership pieces and uh, also what is happening in the Provident family, yeah? And um, we have um, uh, ad hoc uh, communications, uh, such as if, that it, let's say there's a major market event, there is uh, certain policy changes, then that's where you'll hear from us as well. Uh, and not to mention at the uh, individual client level, there will be periodic uh, check-ins. So um, that is where, um, you know, the... Uh, client advisor will reach out to the client and depending on the complexity of uh, the case and all, uh, it could be as regular as, uh, you know, on a quarterly basis, at least for the first uh, initial year or so, uh, or on a yearly basis or once per two years. Right. I like yeah. the analogy that, you know, it's, it's like a marriage, right? Marriage mm. is the start of the journey, not the end. Yeah. Um, right. So how often do we conduct these meetings then, these review meetings? Yeah. So uh, as mentioned, that really depends on uh, the uh, how complex uh, the planning is, you know, the client situation is. So the more complex it is, then of course, um, at the initial phase, uh, we probably need to check in with the client uh, more regularly, uh, maybe on a quarterly basis, just mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, they are comfortable with what has been implemented, they understand what's going on. Uh, and as we have discussed in the previous episode on the advanced planning, um, science advanced planning will kind of like take place over maybe even years, you know. So it it will, that's, it's, inter, it's, it's kind of like interrelated. It's not like, oh, you finish already, then after that, no more. So advanced planning and the regular check-ins can actually uh, be concurrent. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but let's say the client situation is uh, more straightforward. Okay. Then um, we will be meeting on a once a year or once per two years uh, basis. But having said that, that's like the the like must meet kind of uh, meeting. Uh, but that does not mean that right. If clients need uh, any. Uh, you know, anything happen, anything urgent, we always assure the clients that the communication lines are open. They mm -hmm. can always reach out to us. 
right? You can always uh, call us on an ad hoc basis. Of That's course, right. Especially if some unexpected event happened in their life, they can always reach out to us. Correct. Right. So uh, why do we? What's why is it important that we conduct these meetings? Right. I think as you mentioned, the the planning is already done, and mm. in our plan, we already considered. Um, you know how the, our clients expect their life uh, is going to be for mm. maybe the next 10, 20, 30 years, right? So why is it still important that we st- we meet, um, like you mentioned, um, semi-annually or up to bi-annually uh, to catch up with our clients and have this lifelong conversation? Yeah. There's this saying by this Greek philosopher, Heraclitus, uh, where he said that the only constant in life is change. So you cannot kind of like assume that, oh, after even no matter how thorough we, you know, the time, the amount of time and the in-depth discussions, you know, to do up that wealth plan. Okay, we cannot imagine that, oh, you implement the thing, then after that, finish implementation, put the plan into your closet, lock it up, and then 20 years later, you open up, voila, everything happened according to plan, right? Uh, unfortunately, life is not as simple as that. So there will be a lot of changes along the way. Uh, and that's where, you know, um, you know, that regular contact, that regular check-ins, uh, the regular conversations is actually absolutely necessary. Mm, that's true. So what are these, uh, some examples of these changes that can impact a client's plan? Mm. There are lots and lots of changes. Um, so if we really have to, we can kind of uh, group them in uh, three uh, broad categories. One would be uh, in the client's uh, life events, right? Uh, changes in the client's life events. Okay, then the second broad category is uh, changes in the client's uh, life goals, right? And then last but not least is everything else, right? It could be, um, you know, the market changes, it could be policy changes, uh, longer term uh, societal trends. Yeah, so all these are possible uh, changes that can have uh, impact, whether big or small, on a person's wealth plan. Right. So, uh, yeah. What are some examples? Right. You said uh, you mentioned changes in life situations. Right. So let's start mm. with that. Mm. Uh, what mm. are some examples of um, such changes? Right. So if we look at on your personal life, right, mm. uh, it could be that uh, you started off as someone who is like Isaac, taking yourself as an example. Mm. Now you're cur- currently uh, single and available, right, uh, at some point, or maybe not available, sorry. Not married. Oops. Yeah, not married, <laughs> yeah. but you are, at some point, you'll get married, yeah. right, that's a life event, mm-hmm. okay, and then uh, as, as life happens, you may have, you would have children, so these are the good things, right, so when you have kids, your family expands, right, there is um, uh, changes in obligations, your responsibilities, okay, um, and uh, or you can, you can be promoted, right? You get a good pay rise, right? you know, kind yes. of thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, not promising, but yes, it can happen, right? I mean, you're doing a good job. So, uh, so those are the positives, right? Life events. But of course, the negatives could be uh, a death, uh, you know, an unforeseen uh, uh, death in a family, uh, divorce, okay? Or um, some clients can go through retrenchment. Right, depending on the industry, uh, which cycle and all that, they can actually go through this kind of unfortunate, uh, you know, pink envelope kind of uh, event, and mm-hmm. those can have impact as well. Right. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Evelyn. So, um, the the next change that you mentioned is also a change in life goals, right? So, mm. how does that mm. differ from a uh, change in life situation? I mean, when we talk about life goals, we are talking about you know what matters most to us uh, in life. So some of the events that we mentioned earlier, uh, those life change in life events, can actually affect how we think of what is important to us. So say, for example, uh, a death, a death in the family, that can cause a person to rethink, right? Uh, is this the kind of life I want to live? What matters most to me, right? It could uh, cost a, a childhood kind of dream to resurface and Maybe that is the thing that he wants to pursue, you know. So his emphasis and what's important to him uh, can change, yeah. So that's that's uh, uh, an an example of a life goal, and because life goal is affected by our value system, our belief system. So along the way, if a person has a change in his perhaps religious belief, that can also uh, impact on uh, how he views what is important, right? How he views um, the uh, role of money, you know, and how money can uh, uh, allow him 
to live out what matters most in, in that is in alignment with his beliefs, with his uh, value system. Yeah, so these are all uh, examples of uh, life uh, changes and life goals. Yeah, so it's quite interesting that you know a change in life situation or life event can also, I mean, depending on the severity of it, it also can affect how you view the world and also your uh, your values and uh, of course your personal goals as yeah, well. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, we are human beings are complex creatures, right? As we grow older, we may uh, change. You know, uh, we become more reflective. I at least I have. You know, as I grow older, and we are all um, affected by the people that we interact with, the books we read, you know, uh, the information that we take in. And as we reflect, we may um, change the way we look at things, the perspective, you know, and perhaps uh, where we think is a good place for us to live in, right? Because Chris has always been sharing, you know, uh, this guiding statement of uh, how we define uh, a good life, yeah. right? Which is uh, the place uh, that we... Um, Belong. Belong with people that we love, yeah. doing uh, work uh, on purpose, yeah. right? Yeah, so as a person changes the way he thinks and all that, perhaps the place, as he con- reflects, maybe the place that he belongs may be a different country, mm. right? To be right. with people that he loves, right? And that would require a review, okay? Because there, is, there will be impact on the person's plan, Right, in terms of taxes, in terms of expenses, you know, in the kind of assets, you know, maybe he needs to buy a property. So there are a lot of things that can change. Hi listener, we hope you've been enjoying this episode and the podcast series so far. If this podcast has been beneficial to you, please give us a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or your favourite podcast platform. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do like this video and subscribe to not miss our future episodes. Thank you and let's get back to the episode. You also mentioned about changes in everything else, right? Mm. Uh, let's just say externalities like um, the market and uh, or maybe policy changes, mm. right? Mm. So can you also give some example of, of, uh, of this and how, how it can affect a client's wealth plan? Yeah, okay. So maybe we look at, um, you know, the market, right? We talk about market because um, investment is a very big piece in our accumulation uh, towards achieving our life events. But when you think about the market, I mean, we are thinking about broad asset classes, major asset classes like your global equities, your global bonds. What is the return that you should use? Because the planning number that we use has a big impact, right? Yeah. Um, because the your planning re- return, the number that you use, will determine how much capital, how much savings you need to set aside to reach to your life events. Yeah, and all these life events are future oriented. It's in the future. So how do I know what's the the um what is a reasonable reasonable number to use as a expected return, right? I can't forecast, right? So that's where we need to look at is there a scientific way, is there an evidence way of looking at what is a reasonable planning number to use. So that's where Provident Used, uh, adopted the uh, Ibsen Chen model um, to arrive at what is a reasonable uh, planning number mm-hmm. to use for our respective um, portfolios, the asset allocation, right? Um, and that will have a big impact, okay, of uh, on the client's uh, plan. And if you look into dive deeper into that model, uh, one of the key elements is actually the risk-free rate. Mm. So risk-free rate is also a function of interest rate environment, it's a function of the economic environment, you know, of the dominant economy and all that. And all these factors can change yeah. over the longer term. Yeah, we don't right? really have to look that far back, right? I think the risk-free rate has, has changed so much uh, from 2020, um, prior to 2022 and now. Yeah. yeah, so that's where we need to, these are things that trigger us to kind of like, hey, we need to review Right, is the numbers that we use the planning uh, assumptions? Is it still sound? Is it still robust? You know, uh, does it need to change? Right. So these these are the market return uh, related kind of numbers. Inflation is another one. Mm. Right. If you don't use uh, a suitable number, um, it can be a root shock for the client when they retire. Like, hey, actually, not enough. Right. Mm. To maintain the lifestyle that I'm used to. 
Yeah, so that's why all this, um, you know, uh, things we need to kind of like review them on an ongoing basis. Then, of course, uh, longer term trends like aging population, ageism, you know, and what does that mean to a society, right? So, um, so for example, in Singapore, a lot of policies have uh, kind of like um, evolved also to support uh, aging population. So that's where in recent years, you see a lot of changes in uh, the medical insurance. You have the MediShield Life, you have the Integrated Shield Plan, You, the government has introduced your Cash Shield Life, cash life yeah. right? Uh, because people are living longer, so the concern is what if I need nursing help, you know? So it's, it's all this, these are all evolving trends because of changes in society. And in 2008, uh, they introduced the Mental Capacity Act, so now you actually uh, should kind of like put in place your lasting power attorney, right? So how we plan is affected by all the things, you know, and we need to review and we can then integrate, uh, incorporate what is available into our plan. Right. Thanks for sharing. I think uh, when, we, when we talk about changes in life goals, life events uh, and changes in the markets and policies, um, you know, if let's say I'm someone who wants to do it myself, mm, right? Mm, so let's mm. say I'm, a, you know, I, I, I think some of the DIY, are DIY. <laughs> um, but, you know, can I do my own regular reviews, right? You know, if I, maybe I'm someone who keeps up with the market, uh, you know, what's and, and maybe all the changes in policies, mm, etc. Mm, mm. Is this something that I can do myself? I think you can, uh, up to a certain extent. Uh, I'm sure you can review. Uh, the assumptions you can review the parameters you can review your spreadsheets you know but um, planning is not just about numbers right mm -hmm. planning takes into consideration um, your beliefs what matters most to you and some of these things you you know at some point in life you wish that there's someone whom you can trust someone whom um, has your interest at heart someone who can ask you good questions uh, spa with you, be a sounding board, you know, because by asking good questions, the person can actually help to uncover, you know, maybe certain things that you don't even know of mm, that's certain hidden. Blind spots, yes, right? it, it could be yeah. blind spots, it could be certain desires, certain dreams, what you mm. want to do, and it's hidden deep in the recesses of your heart and your mind. Mm. And it doesn't just come out so easily, you need to have people to talk to you. About it, and I think it's a bit tough, right? Yeah. Your own self, ask own self, <laughs> and then have a conversation. I think that's quite challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I think there's, uh, you know, when you, um, like they always say, right? Like a the tennis player also has a coach, right? A mm. professional tennis player has a coach. The coach, um, you know, is really there to see uh, certain blind spots that yep. the tennis player uh, might not be able to see. So I guess it kind of applies in this situation as well. Definitely, it does, and I think yeah. life is a lot more important. Than a tennis match. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, when it comes to having uh, regular meetings, lifelong conversations, it's something that we see, um, you know, it's quite prevalent in our industry, right? So mm. we see in the banking industry or, uh, you know, for insurance agents as well, they meet their clients quite regularly too, right? So how are we different, uh, you know, uh, in a way of um, how we conduct our meeting? I mean, I can't comment on how other advisors or, you know, from other industries and all that does it. But I think at Provident, I mean, we have spent 30 to 50 hours uh, with a client, going through uh, with them, discussing about, uh, you know, what's most important, what's their concerns, what keeps them awake at night, what is it that they would uh, value most, what they, you know, the life that they want to leave. Um, and all that, and then uh, we walk through with them various scenarios, um, the pros and cons, the trade-offs uh, that they have to kind of arrive at, if I may use this word, the most uh, realistically ideal scenario mm. for them, right? Then we kind of develop a wealth plan, a customized uh, plan uh, to achieve that uh, ideal scenario for them. And that's where when we meet up, right, that is like the basis that we always go back to, right? Because that is something that we spend so much time talking about what is important, what is really, you know, uh, their pursuits, their desires and all that. And we'll always want to go back to that uh, context to ask them, anything change, you know, uh, from your life uh, beliefs, your values to life events, 
you know. And then from there, as a, as a professional, we need to know what's the externalities, right, that uh, can affect their plan. And that's for us to share with them, right? So I think that's the, the what we at Provident, uh, you know, as an advisor, we will uh, add value uh, to the client. Uh, and perhaps if I may uh, suggest that the difference is our model, our fee-only model. Um, because our clients know that um, they are the only one who pay us. You know? So in that sense, there is no conflict of interest. We have their best interest at heart. They see us as their trusted advisor. You know? And I don't have any products to push you. So therefore, there is no like stress or pressure or whatever, a fear mm-hmm. you know, in that sense of uh, meeting me. Um, in, so recently I had a, a meeting with a client and she was just saying that she looked forward to this yearly uh, meetup uh, with me. I mean, that was like a woo moment. You know, it's very heartwarming for yeah. me to hear that, that she, she looked so forward. Yeah, she looked to forward share. to meeting me. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, maybe that's the difference. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think anecdotally, I mean, of course, we, you know, we don't want to generalize, but some, you know, from what we hear, sometimes uh, these regular meetings, uh, you know, some of our prospective clients are afraid to go to these regular meetings uh, with uh, other people because perhaps there's some product pushing, uh, you know, and, and all that. So uh, that's definitely not something that we do here. Like mm. you mentioned, uh, we are guided by the wealth plan that we have already crafted for our clients and it's really just to check in with them, you know, of course, uh, in terms of, yes, the, the, the performance and how they are uh, progressing towards their goals, but mm. also to check with them if there's any changes to uh, these goals or uh, any of their life situations. Mm. Uh. Right, so Evelyn, you know, when we were preparing for this uh, podcast, you know, uh, it was quite difficult for us, right? Mm. Because the things that we talk about uh, with our clients is quite vast. I mean, yeah. we talk about, you know, of course, all, ask them about certain changes in their lives, but we also want to catch up on uh, a lot of things and give them a lot of updates on, on, on externalities, for example. But if you could sum it up uh, for our listeners, uh, essentially, what, uh, why is it important to have lifelong conversation? Right? I think, yeah, mm. uh, can you do that? Yeah. Sure. So at Provident, we uh, we think it's important uh, not only to have the highest certainty of achieving the returns that the clients need, but it's also about the certainty of achieving the life that uh, they want to live, right? Um, so just as uh, if I were to take the analogy of uh, sailing a boat, uh, there need to be constant uh, adjustment of um, the sails, the rudder, um, because you need to account for changes in wind, changes in current. So not all the time you have that boat sailing in exactly the destiny, towards the direction of your destination, but through these tweaks and adjustments, uh, you have that higher certainty that hey, you'll reach that destination uh, eventually. So similarly in life, um, we do need to make adjustments and tweaks right, to our plan, uh, to, ad- to account for changes, to account for challenges, to account for things that is beyond our control. Mm. Um, because at the end of the day, it is about the destination that a client wants to reach uh, that is important to them. Right, thanks Evelyn. I mean, lifelong conversations are a crucial part of uh, wealth management and you know it can have a profound impact on our client's wealth journey and that's why we place so much emphasis mm. on it here at Provident. Okay, so uh, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much once again, Evelyn, for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Right, so to all our listeners, I hope you enjoyed our episode on our Lifelong Conversations. If you like this episode, please follow and subscribe to our podcast if you have not done so already. As always, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted forecasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any of use of the information broadcasted, broadcasted or published herein. 
All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.